Hey guys, I'm Jen. I am the owner and founder of Grainline Studio Sewing Patterns, and I'm so excited today to kick off our very first video sew along for our free hemlock tee. Um, this is a free pattern that's available on our website. You just need to sign up for our newsletter, and I'll cover that later in the video. But this is a great sew along for people who have never worked with knits or people who have. Um, I know personally, whenever I take a class for something that I think I know how to do, there's always a tip or two or more that I can pick up to improve my own sewing practice. So I'm so excited to sew this along with you guys. Over the next two weeks, we'll cover every step to making your t-shirt. Today, we're gonna get started with a little bit about the hemlock tee, what supplies you'll need, and how to choose fabrics. So with that, let's dive in. So this is the hemlock tee. As you can see, it's a boxy t-shirt. Um, very comfortable, especially for working from home, like we're all doing right now. Um, but it's a really great t-shirt to learn how to sew knits. There's not a ton of shaping, which makes it easier to fit. So usually when I'm teaching people how to sew a technique or a certain pattern, I first like to focus on how you sew the actual garment before fit. So this hemlock tee I'm wearing here is an example of a very drapey hemlock. This fabric is bamboo, has a lot of lycra, and is a rib knit. So that's three very stretchy things all thrown into one. So you can see how drapey it is. It just clings, um, which I really like in this fabric. And the hemlock works great with a drapey knit or a more stable knit. Um, so it's completely up to you. And now I'm going to show you what it looks like in a more stable knit. <laughs> So here you can see what the fabric looks like in a more stable knit. This is a wool blend jersey. It's slightly brushed, uh, so it's very soft. And you can see it just has a much less pronounced drape. It's definitely more stable. Um, it retains the boxy shape a bit more. And it's just a different look. So think about that when you're picking out fabric. If you want a more drapey tee, go for something with a higher stretch. If you want something more like this, a little bit less straight, a little more stable, um, look for something that's closer to the 10% stretch of the recommended fabrics. Um, and now we're gonna talk about those recommended fabrics. So let's move over to the table. So you'll see here I have three fabrics cut. This is a bamboo jersey. This is a cotton jersey. And this is, it's a wool ponty, sort of French terry type fabric. They're all knit and so and they're all five inches wide. So what we're gonna do to determine the stretch percentage is bring our swatch over to here. So this is zero and this line here marks five and a half. So line up one side with zero, line the other side up with five and a half and stretch. If it stretches to five and a half, you're fine. You can see this one stretches much further. It's a very stretchy knit. Then the cotton, you can see this is a little less stretchy than the bamboo, but it still easily reaches, not a problem. And this is the least stretchy of all three, but you can see this one still even reaches without a problem. You don't wanna be stretching it so far that it, you can see the knit sort of distorting. You want it to be a natural stretch. And so that means all three of these pass the 10% test. So we are set to make our hemlock with any of these three fabrics. And I'll be using this one for mine because it has a very discernible right and wrong side so you guys can see what I'm doing very clearly. All right, now let's go talk about our other supplies because you need a little more than just fabric. In order to make the hemlock tee, you're obviously going to need the pattern. The hemlock tee is a free pattern available for our newsletter subscribers so to grab the pattern, head to our website, grainlinestudio.com, which I'll link in the comments below, and scroll to the bottom of our website. In the footer, you'll see an area called newsletter and then a box to enter your email address. Enter your email address and hit subscribe. You'll see a little green text that says, almost finished, we need to confirm your email address. To complete the subscription process, please click the link in the email we just sent you. Now go to your email and you'll just need to confirm 
that you did mean to subscribe. Once you hit confirm, you'll receive a welcome email with the links to download the pattern. So just download the pattern from there and you're all set. You're going to need something to cut your fabric. You can either use a rotary cutter or scissors. It's completely up to you. A lot of people like to use a rotary for knits. You'll need a rotary mat as well. I prefer to use scissors just because that's what I learned. And You're going to need a few rulers. I like to have a gridded ruler. I use this to lay out my pattern on my fabric. I always have a measuring tape. This is how you're going to determine what size you need to make and also it helps for laying out um, the pattern on the fabric. And then finally, oops, I like a seam gauge. These are great for marking your hems, pressing your hems, um, very useful. So you're gonna wanna have one of those as well. I personally like to trace my pattern onto my fabric and then cut it out rather than cut around the pattern because every time you nick your pattern, it's getting a tiny bit smaller than the last time you used it. And this is very nitpicky, but this is the pattern maker in me who has to trace their pattern out every single time. So if you're going to be doing that, you're going to need a marking tool. These are three of my favorite marking tools. Uh, this is a Clover Choco liner. It has a little wheel and the chalk just comes out of there. This is a bone um, chalk pencil. You can see that super fine lead. It's just chalk. You can trace around with that. Or this is another version of the Choco liner style. The chalk goes in here and this wheel comes around. I do not remember who makes that, but it is available at larger fabric stores. I think I got this at Joann's. Um, so those are my three favorite marking utensils. Since we're working with a knit, you're going to want to use a specialized needle. And since I'm at my house, I don't have any unopened packs, so I'm showing you these on my computer screen. Um, a typical needle that you would sew a woven with has a pointy tip, and this is great for wovens, but not so great for knits, because what happens is you can puncture the knit stitch and it will um, unravel. So you want to use either a stretch needle or a jersey ballpoint needle. And these needles differ from traditional needles in that they have a rounded tip, it's slightly rounded. And that enables the needle to pass into the holes of the knit um, rather than puncturing the actual fibers. And generally speaking, you'll use the stretch needle on more tightly woven jerseys with Lycra or other stretch fibers in them and the jersey or ballpoint needle on fabrics like that don't have the Lycra or maybe it's a sweater knit, just something a little bit less fine. And of course, test out your needles on your fabric beforehand because this is a general rule, but it doesn't always hold true. Um, so you're gonna wanna just do a test beforehand. We're going to need thread to make our garments, of course. If you're using a serger, you'll need cone thread. I like to use, this is Mettler Ceracore. It's a really high quality thread. It has a tight weave um, and it just makes a little bit less dust in your serger. And I find that it's easy to get a good tension with a thread like this, but I'm sure you have something that works well for you. If you're using a sewing machine, you're going to just need regular uh, sewing thread. So this is Guterman 100% um, poly, just standard thread. So the last thing that you're going to need for the Hemlock Sew Along is obviously something to sew it with. In this sew along, I'll be walking you through how to use either a sewing machine or a serger for the construction. Just keep in mind, if you're using a serger, you're going to either need a cover stitch machine or a sewing machine to do your hems. If you're using a sewing machine, that's the only machine you're gonna need. So that is it for today. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, we'll be back next time with how to assemble your pattern. Um, so. Gather your supplies, check your fabric stretch, make sure you have everything you need, and I will see you back here next time. Bye!